Today's workout is the advanced workout from my diastasis recti repair plan. This workout progresses on from the beginner and intermediate workouts in this plan, so make sure you've done those before moving on to this one. It's postpartum and C-section safe. All you need is a mat. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to our third advanced workout in our diastasis recti series. So we're gonna build on those first two workouts, the beginner and the intermediate version. Be sure you have done those each several times before moving to this one, because we're really gonna challenge our core, so we wanna make sure we have a good foundation. Let's get started with that quadruped breathing, hands and knees. This time we're gonna do a shallow breath technique. So deep breath in, fill that belly up, deep breath out, hold it, then keep that belly pulled in. We go in, out, in, out. Do you see the movement? It's shallow, it's quick. Just a little expansion. And then you're pulling that belly in as tight as you can get it. Relax everything but your core, hips, glutes, neck, shoulders. Almost there. It's a short interval, but feel free to keep going if you want even more of a challenge and rest. Okay, we're gonna move to a bird dog with a crossover oblique crunch. So starting in that quadruped position, we're gonna lift the front arm and the back leg up, bring the knee toward the elbow meeting in the middle, extend and then tap down, come to the other side, reach out, Knee to elbow, out and down. So focus on rotating, coming, tucking that hip under, bringing the knee to meet the elbow. So you're never shifting back. You can see in my bottom arm, my shoulder stays over my wrist and I'm rotating through my hip to get that little oblique crunch. If you can't quite get that full rotation to touch the knee to the elbow, that's okay. Bring it in here as close as you can or go back to the traditional bird dog. But this one, we just get a little something extra with that oblique work. And it's great mobility for the hips, the spine. And we relax. Now we're gonna move to that supine march. This time we're gonna turn it up just a little bit here. So knees are gonna come up over the hips one at a time and we're gonna switch mid air. Can you see the difference? So in the previous workouts, we were lowering one leg at a time. This time we're switching them mid air bringing the knees directly over hips, pressing the low back toward our mat. Light tap on those toes. Again, lower backs pressing toward the floor, belly buttons pulled in and up, zipped up nice and tight. Palms up, everything is relaxed. That pressure's in the core. Light on those toes. Again, no pressure to move quickly. We wanna move controlled. Last couple. And rest. We're gonna move on, this time doing a reverse march. So we're gonna make this one a little more challenging than the first two exercises or the first two workouts. So knees up, tap, and lift, this is a traditional reverse march, one at a time we lower. If you wanna make it harder for our advanced workout together, you take the leg a little further out. Only if you're ready for it though, just because it's advanced doesn't mean you have to do the absolute hardest thing. Maybe you do a few and then you go back to the baseline version of this exercise. Again, I talk about respecting your body postpartum and what it's capable of. Different people are gonna be capable of different things for different amounts of time. You start where you can and do what you can do well. And that might mean you decrease the time interval. That might mean you do a modified variation. But you've got all the time in the world to work up to the advanced stuff, so don't rush it. Rest, we're gonna to move to a supine straight leg hip circle. So last workout, we did the bent leg hip circles. This time, legs up, point your toes because it's prettier. Drop the legs down, around, and up. They stay together, they separate, little circle, back up, straight to the ceiling. Now you can see it's not a huge movement. I'm not lowering my legs very much. 
because I want to establish good control. Back pressing toward the mat, belly button pulled in. I still have a little bit of diastasis recti that I'm working on because I'm newly postpartum as well. So I'm not pushing my legs to go lower. Could I take them lower? Yes, but would I maintain control? No. So that's the question you want to ask yourself. Could you do more? Maybe. But are you going to maintain control? Are you going to maintain that strong abdominal wall engagement, that pelvic floor engagement? If you're losing it, and that might mean your back lifts, that might mean you see coning, doming, or pooching in your abs, it's ineffective. So take the modifications when you can. Okay, we're gonna move on to a straight leg drop. So legs are gonna come back up to the ceiling, one leg at a time, we drop it to the floor. Front leg goes first, lower down as low as you can. If you can, tap the heel, bring it back up. Moving really slow, you can see, I'm really taking my time ensuring that my core stays engaged, my back stays down. You can flex or point your foot. Now you might feel this in the tops of your legs. And like I mentioned in the previous workout, that's totally normal. You can take a break. You can bend your knees to do this exercise or just decrease the time interval. And of course, make sure to stretch and or foam roll pre and post workout. And that will help with that burning we feel in the legs. A lot of that is just we're using our quads and that our quads are tight to begin with. So we're gonna feel some tension there as we move through these exercises and rest. All right, we're gonna move on now to a single leg glute bridge. So we're gonna lift that front leg over your hip and keep it up for the duration of this interval. So lift the hip, tap the hip, lift, tap. And if you want to, you can lower this leg as you tap down. Knee stays directly over the hip. Again, that's where we're gonna feel that core pressure. And then we're driving through that opposite heel, squeezing the glute, but again, we don't wanna go as high as possible. We wanna go as high as possible while keeping that work in the back body, the glutes, keeping that arch more neutral, not an excessive arch in that low back. Keep going. And these exercises like this are great. It's unilateral training. So we're working one side at a time. So we can really work on muscle symmetry here. Rest, All right? We're gonna do the exact same thing, other side now. Take a deep breath, reset that core. And here we go. Really quiet when you drop the hips. And each side's gonna feel slightly different. Of course, nobody's perfectly symmetrical. But again, just be patient with where you're at. That's why I do timed intervals. There's no pressure to move at a certain pace or to complete a certain number of reps to feel successful. Success is doing things with proper technique. Whether you do two or 20, I don't care. Two well done reps are better than 20 like mediocre reps. So take your time, slow it down. Like I said, you've got all the time in the world to advance. These workouts will be up as long as YouTube is alive. So you have plenty of time to do it. Okay, we're gonna move to a side forearm plank with hip dips. So coming into a 90 degree forearm position, bottom leg bent, top leg straight. We're gonna lift the top arm up, lift the hip, light tap, push it back up, light tap. Keep going here, you can look up. You can keep your hand on your hip if you prefer that. Make sure your forearm is pressing down and you're lifting through the underside of your waist. So you're not just lifting the hip, you're really using your obliques to wrap around, pulling that belly button in toward your spine, zipping it up. I'm giving you lots of imagery here. I feel like that helps me to visualize what I'm doing with my core here. And if you really wanna go for it, you could scissor your legs here or you could stack them for the ultimate advanced core exercise. Now this is pretty intense here. So if you're just doing this workout for the first time, I'd stay with that bent leg. Again, no reason to rush into it. Rest, we're gonna move around to the other side. Pulling that belly in, let's reach up, light tap. And if you don't quite have the flexibility in your hips or your shoulder to tap that foot or to tap the hip to the floor. That's okay, just hover it. 
Even a little pulse at the top range of the movement is gonna be fine. It's gonna be great and beneficial. Pulling that belly in, especially as you lift the hip up and exhale, that helps engage that TVA. It's all about the breathing too, keeping that belly pulled in, but also on the hardest part of the exercise, getting an exhale, pull that belly in. That's gonna assist your core in optimal function. And if you want to for the last few seconds, why not on those feet or stack the feet? Just a couple more. And that's it. We've made it through the workout. We've made it through this series. So there's your advanced version of our diastasis recti repair plan. So if you've done this one, keep going for a few more. And that way, you know you've worked through the whole program and you can really continue to build on that strong foundation. Moving on to some of my additional postpartum workouts. They're under my YouTube channel playlists. You'll see different programs for postpartum core in addition to standalone postpartum core workouts that will be perfect after you've healed your diastasis recti. So I hope I see you again soon and let me know what you think of this workout in the comments. See you next time.